It's one minute to midnight on that doomsday clock, and we need to act now. This is our chance to forge a cleaner, healthier, more prosperous world. The echoes of the COP climate summit, but three months on, the UK is expanding coal production. The Westminster government's allowing the Aberpergam pit in South Wales to expand to win 40 million tonnes of anthracite coal over the next 18 years. So what was all that noise at the COP summit about? The Welsh government signing up to end all fossil fuel investment? If we had control of it, we wouldn't have been doing it. All new licences for coal are being turned down. This is an anomaly, it's one that predates the evolution, where we didn't have the power. The mine owners have said most of their coal will go to greener markets. They decline to be interviewed, but local support's enthusiastic. Water filtration, water desalination, uh, brickworks, glass making, they even produce coal for use in medical uh, procedures. So, you know, this is, this is needed. And if we don't have this mine here, Wales won't be able to produce any of that. But these are future hopes. Tonight we can reveal the present financial reality from the company itself. The mining company has confirmed in writing to Channel 4 News that 80% of its output will simply be used in traditional ways. The furnaces at the Port Talbot Steelworks down the road and domestic heating. The company emailed us to say this year's steel would be 60% and domestic fuels 20, making 80%. From 2023, it's steel 60% and domestic fuel 10%, making 70%. We think from talking to them that they, they are genuine in their attempts to move on to a different use for their coal, and we want to work with them to get to that point. If they can't get to that point, it's game over. But if they can, there's a different future for that mine, which helps with the transition to a low-carbon economy. The UK government says the mine is for the production of thermal coal for industrial purposes, which would need to have been imported from abroad anyway. But before the coal gets to the steelworks, critics say just mining it emits vast amounts of methane, a greenhouse gas 30 times more powerful than carbon dioxide. Do they have a point? Indeed they do, and the mine would um, make sure that that methane is flushed out of the working phase because it is potentially explosive. And there have been some uh, quite uh, uh, prominent accidents that take place, but the, the mine has got a good safety record and would be aware of that. The valleys of South Wales are, of course, long used to the effects of mining good and bad. But in a climate crisis, research by the Global Energy Monitor for this programme estimates up to 1.17 million tonnes of methane emissions from this mining, regardless of how the coal will be used. The mine owners told us they have plans for methane capture and mitigation, but we understand those plans are not in place now. Regardless of where those fuels are going, we will be seeing the impact of methane in our atmosphere in vast quantities. That means that we are not st sticking to our pledge, uh, our carbon, our methane pledge from the climate conference. Just by digging it out of the ground? Just by digging it out of the ground. Campaigners say they may now take legal action to try and stop the mine expansion. The UK government says the Welsh government could have stopped it, but didn't. The Welsh Government says, we've no powers. The whole thing has now become a devolution dog's dinner. The Welsh Government blaming the UK Government, saying they're not doing their job and vice versa. And on a global scale, it leaves the UK Government telling the world, keep coal in the ground. Whilst here, we're digging it out. Locally and globally too, the steel market for coal is fading. But all but wants non-coal furnaces as fast as possible. So as coal furnaces become a sunset industry, the dream of greener coal uses can't become reality soon enough. Alex Thompson, well, I'm joined now by Rachel Kite, who has been one of the UN's most senior climate change officials and was an advisor to the UK government at COP26. Um, Rachel Kite, COP26 was on our doorstep. It was the UK's cry to lead the world on consigning coal to the dustbin of history, yet here we are expanding a coal mine. How do you make sense of that? 
Well, it, it doesn't actually in the long run make a lot of sense because um, we need to get to net zero. We need to decarbonize. So does every other country. Um, and we're beginning to sort of dance on the head of the pin if we think that continuing to invest in fossil fuels, in particular in coal, uh, is a long-term solution or strategy. Uh, the comments in your video around methane were, were very pertinent. I mean, methane is an accelerant of climate change. It's an extremely powerful uh, a, a sub substance when emitted. And so, you know, every time that we continue to um, make these investments part of our strategy of a transition, we simply make it more expensive and more difficult in future to get back to the point that we need to be on. We're not on the right trajectory. No country is on the right trajectory at the moment. And every time we make one of these investments or make this part of our industrial strategy or energy strategy, we're just going to make it more expensive and more difficult for ourselves further Angus, down the line. It's not just about expanding coal extraction here, is it? The government just a couple of days ago overturned a local council decision in Bristol to say the airport can grow. Now, the inspectors who allowed that said it was precisely because there is no national climate policy to stop airport expansion. So what is going wrong here? Yeah. Well, I think, I think the UK, along with many other countries, is struggling with the sort of joined up total government approach to managing their climate plans. So I mean, in the UK, we have the the Climate Change Commission, which gives you a policy pathway forward. But then there's tension between different ministries uh, in Westminster. There's tensions then with devolved governments. There's tensions with local authorities. And then there's tensions between different sectors of industry with sort of some wanting to sort of say, well, look, we need, we need more help than others and we will go later than others. And I think what we're really uh, needing at this point in the transition, given that net zero is enshrined in law, is a total government approach and much greater coordination and steering and signalling from Westminster. Because it's not just tensions, is it? It's a sort of get-out clause, isn't it? Well, there's, there's, there's actually a lot of rubbish uh, as well, because we've seen just in recent days, you know, sort of anonymous ministers sort of saying, well, maybe we shouldn't be heading for net zero anymore. Well, that was a manifesto pledge. And I don't think we're going any faster than any other country. 88% of global emissions are covered by some kind of net zero pledge. Um, and, you know, I, I think the cost of not trying to meet net zero now is going to be uh, way, way, way more expensive than sort of trying to uh, sort of postpone uh, the reality of, of moving towards renewables. And it gets wound up then with energy prices and the whole discussion around the affordability of individual household energy bills. But again, there, you know, the, the price of energy is, is very much related to the international gas price. It's not because we're trying to go green too quickly. I mean, I just wonder whether you're starting to question the government's commitment on this. We've seen Liz Truss, the Foreign Secretary, in a private government jet to Australia, reports that Boris Johnson himself used a private plane uh, this week. Do you question the government's commitment on this? What do you feel about those flights? Yeah, I think, well, I think the transition is... Um is complicated and it's it's very there are many very many moving parts and so from the top of government and all the way through the cabinet there needs to be a determination to uh, to to smooth this and to make it possible there needs to be consistency in communication and those are the things that we don't see I don't think it's I don't think it's very edifying to see different members of the cabinet hedging their positions, presumably looking uh, at what might be a leadership situation in, 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 the, in the near future. Meanwhile, we are still the presidents of the COP. Even though Glasgow happened, we are presidents and through, through until November of this year. But and Alok Sharma is still representing parts. us globally. If moving parts are private jets, what message does that send out if we're trying to be global leaders in this? Yeah, no, I, I, I think uh, others have, other, others in the press have made the point that um, uh, private jets uh, very rarely are the best option. But I, I also think that that kind of um, that this is this is a more this is a more important conversation uh, between the government and the people about and 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 the general public about what it's going to take to be able to move through an energy transition where people will have cheaper energy because it will be cleaner and those people who think that they're going to get a job in a coal mine now are actually going to be trained for better future because that coal mine is not going to be viable but uh, very much longer into the future and we need to be talking about that conversation of course yeah playing gotcha over who got on a private plane and whether that was the right thing to do and whether it was the right thing to be doing to be in sydney when with 
the energy crisis and the international crisis is back in Europe. Those are those are those are good questions for the media. But I think we we really need a good conversation about based on facts and evidence about what we're doing in this energy transition and the idea that uh, we should have more gas, more coal, more oil at a time when we know we need less of it. Uh, that's where I think government is letting the people down.